Wakefield, 1925. An Asian metropolis, a genuine city. The main thoroughfare came in from the West Gate, along Merrygate into the Bull Ring. Here, in the centre of the city, the statue of Queen Victoria, erected in 1904, reflects civic pride. The high point of the years between the wars was the yearly carnival, which took some three hours to pass down Market Street, past the cattle market and into the park. Each area of the city had a comic band. Eastmore, a constant favourite with the crowd, played until the 1930s. Watching this parade, we feel a massive sense of the community coming together. Little did the happy throng realise that their community and way of life would be swept away forever within a few years. 38 years later, Wakefield had become a city of surprises. An industrial city with some old, dignified buildings left. From Westgate, the visitor was quickly conveyed into the bull ring. Queen Victoria's statue, which formerly graced the area, was removed to Clarence Park in 1950. Here visitors got their first glimpse of the developments which have been carried out. Parades of modern shops, 
above which were flats and offices. Surrounded the centrepiece, room for which had been made, unfortunately, by the demolition of some picturesque old properties. But the increasing number of vehicles passing through the city required wider roads. As well as keeping traffic moving, the city planners had to look after pedestrians and zebra crossings had recently been located at various points. In Kyrgyz, the wide streets were flanked by a variety of shops and stores and the city was fast gaining the reputation of being one of the best shopping centers in the whole of the West Riding. Looking down Cross Square could be seen the crowning glory of Wakefield, the majestic Cathedral Church of All Saints, which had a seating capacity of some 1,200. The spire, which reached a height of 247 feet, was the highest in the county. One of the busiest parts of the city was the Springs, which joined Lower Kirgate and Westmoreland Street. Here, many new shops were to be found. The large variety of colourful and well-stocked shop windows were evidence of a thriving and prosperous community. The new Market Hall, opened in 1964, was one of the finest of its kind. Inside, on two levels, were brightly coloured stalls from which one could obtain a large range of goods. Equally important was the open market, which, with its multicoloured roofs, gave a continental atmosphere. Here, milling throngs of weekend shoppers could be seen looking for the best or the cheapest, always with an array for a bargain. The open market was held on Friday and Saturday of each week, when tradesmen of the city and surrounding districts assembled to display their products for sale. Beneath the town hall clock, in the council chamber with its unique layout, the members of the city council awaited the arrival of the mayor, who, preceded by the mace bearer and followed by the town clerk, made his way to the place at the head of the chamber. The mace, which symbolizes the authority of the mayor, was presented to the city by Alderman Pickles in 1936. It's silver, heavily plated in gold and four feet long. The full council of 11 aldermen and 33 councillors elected from all walks of life met at monthly intervals when matters of city administration were discussed in a truly democratic manner. The subject under discussion may well have been the provision of car parks, a facility which was essential to the life of a forward-looking city.
With a population of some 60,000, which was steadily increasing, the provision of adequate housing was always high on the list of priorities of the City Council, which had, over the years, provided a variety of types of houses in ten main housing estates. Queen Elizabeth House, completed in 1960, was one of several special homes for the aged. These homes provided the care and company which enabled those in the autumn of life to live quietly and comfortably. A fully qualified staff was always on hand to ensure that the needs of the residents were catered for. Much thought had been given to the furnishings of these homes and every conceivable aid to safety and comfort had been incorporated in the design. Housing estate annual competitions were held for the best kept gardens, which, while generating friendly rivalry, made the estates even more attractive. Close to the city centre, land for housing development was naturally scarce, and to use available land to the best advantage, flats were erected. The first of many such projects, Car House has 11 floors and contains delightful one and two bedroom flats of modern design. From the windows of these flats, one can obtain excellent panoramic views of the city. Evidence of the continuing development and expansion can be seen on all sides. It was often necessary to demolish old property to provide space for the erection of new buildings in keeping with the overall plan of a city determined to keep pace with the progress of modern society. New construction was not confined to housing and the development of the city centre. New schools, of which Thorns High was typical, were provided. The child's first experience of school was at the primary infants, where they commenced at the age of five, remaining until they were seven. During this time, basic instruction was given in many subjects, which would form the foundation upon which their subsequent education would be built. There were 13 schools in the city, devoted entirely to infants. In addition, a further five were combined with junior schools, which took children from 7 to 11 years old. In addition to teaching the children to read, write and do simple arithmetic, every effort was made to encourage self-expression. Typical of the new city high schools, which cater for children from the age of 11 onwards, was the cathedral school. Domestic science was one of the numerous practical subjects in which the girls received instruction. Dressmaking, cookery and other domestic tasks were taught by competent and fully qualified staff. In the city high, the child was finally prepared for playing a full and useful part in domestic life, industry, commerce, or for further education at other schools or colleges which specialized in particular fields.